three days on from the Sligo game, what were your reflections on Saturday night? Um, I think it was um, a difficult night. You know, I think you have to take into consideration the conditions, you know, over the weekend. I think for all the League of Ireland matches weren't good. And, um, you know, we changed our team around when we saw the conditions because obviously when we arrived up in Sligo on Friday, on Friday evening, we could see that the, the gale was, um, was, was in and uh, obviously continued all day Saturday. So, um, you know, look, looking back at the game, it was, tight, it was a tight game. Um, I suppose we actually played better in the first half against the win. We created a few chances and obviously... Um, could have had a, a penalty um, when Carroll Shepherd was um, was taken down the box and obviously Benno hitting the crossbar just before half time, you know. But in the second half, to be fair to Sligo, you know, against the win they played better and um, we got a bit disjointed and they put us on the back foot and we found it difficult. But I suppose you know there's tremendous character in the team and we saw it all last year and I suppose to go one 0 down with seven minutes to, to go the game looked over, you know. But um, you know we kept going to the end and I suppose. It was brilliant for, for us to to finish it to um, give us a point and send us down the road happy. The makeup of the team on Saturday night, players seem to be playing out of position. Is that a problem for you that you're trying to fit guys in, or would it be better to just make a straightforward decision and play players in their in their positions? Who was playing on the position? Well, they thought Carroll was on the left. They thought Gavin was on the right. That normally plays that they play. Kirk Carroll should play in the European League for Shamrock Rovers as a, as a wide right player and scored in Europe. Um, Gavin Hoon has been the right of midfield for Drada on numerous occasions last year. Um, we actually were quite adventurous. We played, we played um, three guys up front. Um, you know, sometimes it can be easy from the stand and you know, look, looking in because um, you know, conditions on the pits were, 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 were horrendous. The, the wind and gale was horrendous in, 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 the, in the first half. But, um, you know, our intention was, you know, we felt we could win the match. Obviously, we, 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 we changed it that morning with the conditions and we changed some personnel. But, um, you know, I suppose, the, you, know, you know, if people look back at their career, you know, what, what, what position was I? Was I a centre-forward or was I a right-winger or a left-winger? Because... I played in all those positions and um, you know, we do a lot of chopping and changing of training, different scenarios and um, you know, I suppose it was one of those ones, you know, do you, do you leave out Mark or Sullivan so and play Carl or play Mark in the wing? It was um you know, it was uh, like to, to be fair, if if, if we analyse the game, um Shep had a header from early on the match just over the crossbar, could have had the penalty. And um you know, so you know, I, I look, I, I look at it that um, that you have, you know, you're 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 looking at a situation that it wasn't, you know, you might say, well, who'd you who'd you play right wing? You know, we asked Gavin to play right side of midfield, which is a very good job in, and um, but um, you know, there wasn't, you know, John O'Flynn played a, a bit of that role last year. John is out injured. Robbie Han was out injured, and um, so there wasn't. There, there isn't many players that can play that, that role, you know, and, um, um, you know, possibly Josh could have played, but Josh is full-time working now and he's finding it difficult to train full-time with us and, um, or he isn't training full-time with us, but, um, you know, I, and, and to be fair, I think, I thought, particularly in the first half, I thought Gavin, Gavin did well and I thought Shep did well very, very much so in the first half. Would there be changes this week with Billy to come back because he was suspended as well? Yeah, and of course Billy was out as well, you see, and we lost, you know, so, you know, while, while you know, it's, it's funny, we've addressed and um, we brought in a lot of attacking players. You know, you end up in your first league game in Sligo and you have Billy out suspended, you have Flinny injured and, and Robbie Han, you know, and um, to be fair, Danny came on and Danny hasn't played a, a match in, in over a year. So while you have lots of options up front, you think... First game of the season, you could say you were down three were out and and, and uh, one has come back from long term injury. But uh, would we make changes for this weekend? Yes, you know, and um, you know it's a different type of game. You know, it's our first home game. We're really looking forward to it. We, there's a great buzz around the city. We expect a huge crowd, and obviously, Limerick turned us over in the Monster Senior Cup last last week. So we could see what they had. You know, they're very youthful, very enthusiastic, lots of energy, um, great desire. And you know maybe maybe um they surprised us last week, but 
you know, overall they probably deserved a win. So it's an opportunity for us at home, first league game, to see can we get our first win under our belt, and um, we're looking forward to that. So yeah, there will be there will be changes. And at the end of the day, Saturday night was a brilliant point, wasn't it? Well, I've been as a player. It was a long time around the league. As a supporter, I've been a long time around the league. And as a manager, I've been a long time around the league. And when you score a late, late equaliser, come out of Sligo, the last game of the game with an equaliser, you know, you, you, when, when, it, when you're staring the feet, um, you know, it shows that one, there's great character in the team, but the fact that you took a point out of the match, it certainly made the long journey home a bit better. So would you work the Roscoe you know, back in the extra team on Friday night? Yeah, we're looking at different options. You know, I suppose it, it was a situation that, um, you know, we just felt going to uh, Sligo, we knew all about, you know, Nielsen and Cochrane, two big strong guys up front. Uh, Benno and Dan did great. We put Darren at left back because physically he was strong and we, we, we felt it put us in a lot of pressure at set pieces. And, um, but, you know, Friday night's game, totally different game, totally opposite. You're going to have a team like, like uh, Limerick who play in the counter-attack, they'll sit back. And they try and break quickly, and um, you know we need to move the ball much quicker. We must get the ball wide. You know it's an opportunity for us, but we know we're going to have to create a lot more chances. So um, it's a different type of game on Friday night. John, the crowd last year played a massive part, and you'll be hoping for the same again this year. And even people who haven't been to terms across the fourth club sports team on Friday night. Yeah, I think you know the real buzz of last year was such a positive fight to the club, and I think you can see that. Um, Turner's Cross was a special place last year and we're hoping this year it'll be the same you know obviously there's huge enthusiasm um, everyone that was there last year wanted to come back which is fantastic for us and obviously there's new followers you know new people out there who are saying they're going to follow us this year which is great so you know that's what it's all about because you know we saw last year that the atmosphere was incredible and there is no doubt in my mind you know that the crowd were responsible for a lot of the positive results we got and, um, and as a player here it's brilliant to walk out in front of your own fans and and, and really put on, a, put on a performance and win because they appreciate that and I think they appreciate how good and how hard working this team is and um, we must continue that so you know first game of the season we're all looking forward to this great buzzing training this week you know obviously getting the lady equaliser looking forward to our first home game seeing a big crowd coming out and um, we're all looking forward to it and um, you know just, just hoping that the crowd can get in early and get the atmosphere going you know right from the start and, um, and hopefully we can give a good performance Because talk of Damien Duff coming home in the summer Looking for a League of Ireland club. Any interest, or do you have enough Irish internationals at this point? I don't think Damien will be coming to Cork. <laughs> I yeah, I heard that, and there's you know I'm, I'm sure there's there's quite a few of um, the teams around Dublin that would be interested in him. Um, I suppose again, you know, I keep saying it's good for our league to have these high profile guys coming back, maybe playing the last couple of seasons, their last couple of years in the in our league. Um, I, I see it as a positive move you know some people that aren't into League of Ireland or don't promote uh, Irish soccer might see it that you know that it's it's um, guys are coming on their last legs I don't see it that way I think if you look at the, our league like Fail particularly Fahey did really well you know won a cup last year we've had Colin obviously Liam, Liam, Liam has come back in um, I think it's good for our league you know and the um, you know, more to, more of these guys we can attract the better but um, I don't think he'll be coming to Cork Worth a shot anyway this really is John, there was apparently there was over forty players couldn't play at the weekend because carryover suspensions. Yes. Is it time for the league? Have a look at that. Absolutely. Especially players who've moved to a different club, let's say. Well, I think I think in, I think look at it's one of those no-brainers, and that why is that rule still there? Because I think to be fair, you know, and it came up at the managers' meeting, and we 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 said we said this that um, you know. Fair enough, if a guy gets a, a red card in his last league game of the previous season, you may want to carry that over. But carrying over a yellow card is, is unfair and it's wrong. And I think it should be a clean slate. And I think, to be fair, it was a manager's meeting a couple of weeks ago and we all said the same thing. And uh, we're certainly hoping that from the start of next season that that, that rule has come in. It's easy to know this season as well as they've got the five yellow cards. Yes. As opposed to four last four, Yes. Yeah, so that, it's a, that's an improvement. It is, and I suppose look, at, I, I keep saying, look, we want we want to keep the game competitive. We want like you look at the, you look at the match in Sligo. There wasn't there wasn't a dirty kick in the match. You know we ended up with a, you know four yellow cards. They ended up with four. Most of them were, were were probably yellow cards to be fair because the referee had a good game. Um, but at the same time, you know I think you know in our league, you want teams to be as strong as they can. You know if if a guys are 
you know, out of order and get sent off and then they need to suffer. But, you know, I'd even have it higher than five yellow cards. I'd even have it maybe up to eight because I think, you know, depending on referees, some are card happy, others aren't. I think, you know, nowadays it's 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 easy for fellas to get booked, but at the same time, I'd even have it higher, but look at at least five is an improvement on, on last year. A lot of people don't probably realise that if, if if a team on the night gets and you got one more yellow card or in the case of they one more yellow, the club are fine then as well, aren't they? Yeah, well that's the side we've done a lot of talk on this year and we've spoken about our discipline and, and um you know, that we don't want to pick up silly yellow cars or whatever and to be fair you know we hammered home to the lads and, and um, you know I think if you look back on Saturday night's game probably to be fair bar one the other three were just tackles that were just late so there was no malice in them but you know they were yellow cars and, 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 and that, that's the way it is but it's uh, you know you have to be careful and um, you know we, we, we've spoken a lot about guys not getting booked silly and, and uh, certainly certainly for discipline and, and uh, stuff like that we, do, we expect them not to not to get involved so um, you know we'll see, we'll see this year look at the end of the day we were competitive last year we still finished second in the fair play so overall our season our, our, even though there was a, a taint that we were a strong physical team overall we look at the season we are the second in the fair play rule to show them how good our discipline was Injuries for Friday night? Um, John O'Flynn came back training this morning which was, which was great John had been out sick for the last couple of weeks um, doubt over Rob Lehan didn't train today and um, his touch and go whether he'd be available for the weekend uh, Michael McSweeney is similar um, but other than that I think sort of um, we'd have everyone else training today and, and I'm hoping that by Friday we'll have, we'll have everyone else uh, available to pick from Carry probably should have waited up next week with uh, the Shamrock Rovers game up here and you been with Rovers last year but how are you settling in? I'm looking at it so far uh, the club's been very good to me so far they've got everything sorted nice and quick so I'm like settling very nicely and with Ross and Cairns Jolly and things are going nicely so far. And how are you finding the training in the pre season? It was very tough but it was enjoyable as well. Like uh, I think when you're coming in every day you don't want to be just slogging it like where you're just out running no footballs but as John's he's made it tough but also enjoyable but I think we're going in the right, right direction now. And have you set any personal goals or targets for your goals? This wasn't the right word. I think the only target I'm working on now is just to break into the team and stay there. Obviously, it's always nice to score goals, but for me, it's just get the team winning and get us going in the right direction. I must be looking forward to playing your first competitive match and trying to cross as a Cork City player. Yeah, definitely. Am. I sort of enjoyed it last year. also didn't because we were getting beaten quite a lot up there and being beaten well, but I think uh, everyone knows that. The buzz up in terms cross is massive from last year, and hopefully it'll be the same again come Friday. And the monster derby is well, just going to bounce to the spice of it. Yeah, it does, and also they bet us last game. Like we didn't enjoy that one bit, so obviously we want to try and get one over on them come Friday. Carriages yeah. uh, at the moment in the game, you know, uh, most players are going to sign just one year contracts, and if you're lucky, it's a roller over contract the following year. If you just avoid you get another one. Is that that's kind of creating a bit of instability and insecurity for players, I would think. Yeah, it does. I think come every off season, come around October, November, players are starting to worry and I don't think it's really I don't think it's really fair on many players in the league. Like you have a lot of good players and then come October time they're starting to worry where will I be next year. I think it does create a lot of instability in the league, like and especially for players that are fighting for their future every day really, like when they go into training but I think it's just the times now where the money isn't really in the game. I think the league's starting to pick up a bit now, to be honest. Like, I think clubs are starting to... Right, think it might improve. Yeah, clubs are starting to maybe go in the right direction. Like, you haven't seen teams fold since, I think, in the Premier since, what was it, Galway, the last team that dropped out. Like, but I think the league's starting to go the right direction. So maybe things will go better in terms of contracts. Like, for players, yeah. Yeah. What, what was your longest contract you've been? Was it when you were with Rovers? Or? Uh, did you resign a trailer for your deal? No, well, uh, <coughs> only one, I've only been on one year so far since I've been in Ireland. I went to Galway one year, Rovers one year, left Galway, came back, and then was on a, one, a long deal with Rovers and then a, year, a year's deal again. Yeah. When you went to Reading, was it Reading, was it? When you went over there? Yeah, it was on a, there was another... a two and a half year deal there. But like, yeah, yeah. Mm. And you played in Europe, you played in Europe, obviously, with Rovers. 
Yeah, that, that was great, and obviously, yeah, that was great. And obviously, we're going to get on in July, so yeah, we we're into that now. What have been the kind of the, the basic differences? That obviously, you're taking up a, a notch or two. Yeah, the competition. It's something we're obviously looking forward to, and it's going to be enjoyable. But I think we have to put that to the back of our minds now. For now, like uh, come the time, it will obviously be something that you need to obviously try and just get a bit of a look of a draw in the first. In the first round, try and get maybe a lower seeded team, and, and you, have, you have to try and progress through that one and take it from there. Really, like we obviously, with Shamrock Grove that year, we got a bit of luck in the draw. Uh, getting I think it was Flora Palm we got, and then obviously we had Copenhagen, but because we were in the Champions League, we got bumped into the Europa from there. But I think we just have to take it round by round, and then hopefully get a look at a draw. But I think up until that, we just have to try and win games now. Did you play against um, Juventus and Tottenham? No, uh, they were before my time, like uh, Juventus was, but I was in the Europa League squad like for yeah. the group stages. Yeah, and it was a kind of a career highlight for you, was it, to get to that level and play in those matches? Um, yeah, it was. Uh, I think it's something I look back at fondly now. Like It was obviously, I didn't realise at the time how good of an achievement it was from the squad, Like, but yeah. hopefully you never know. Like team in the league can do it again hopefully soon. Yeah, well, was there a first service team to get into the group stages from there? Mm -hmm. uh, the I think so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what was your kind of view overall in the drop and sleep well? To be honest I think it was a bit like the Shamrock Rovers game the night before we watched and I think the wind sort of killed the game, killed any standard that was going to be in it was really hard conditions to play in but uh, I think when you look back at it at the end of the season it's a very good point when you go up to Sligo places like that teams who are going to be in around challenging if you can win your home games and draw your away once you'll be laughing come the end of the season like